coming in. Hey, I, I missed what you guys were talking about earlier. I came right on it. Something about OJ and friends that he murdered. What? No, we we were talking about the FX series, the final scene in the FX series oh. of OJ versus the people or OJ, whatever it was, yeah. was he's like having this big, I'm at a jail party. And he's like, where are my golf buddies? Where are <laughs> this people? Where are all my friends? And he's looking around like, oh, I don't have any friends. And it's, I'm looking at the TV like, OJ, you murdered a couple things showing up at your house. Like, what did you think was about to happen? <laughs> like, But I, I'm not guilty, y'all. I'm not yeah. guilty. Come By the way, he doesn't even like to be in L.A. Shout out to Mitch. Hey, man, I won't mention this guy's uh, name. I'll give him his initials. O.J. O.J.S. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> we can never uh, we can never we can never talk about O.J. Simpson <laughs> oh, without running the uh, without <laughs> running the Mitch sounder. <laughs> You're listening to d and KC on ESPN 1320 KIFM West Sacramento KRX QHD2 Sacramento. An Odyssey station and driven by Lasher's Elk Grove Dodge. We welcome in a 1320 hosting contributor, our very own Olivia Christian. Olivia, great to see you as always. Made is back. It, oh. Is it really great to see me? Are you really happy to see me? Yeah. Always, always wonderful to see you. We don't always see you uh, nearly, nearly enough. And well, more Kings basketball last night. You tweeted a gift that made me laugh. Like I can't, I can't, I can't lie. The gift, the gift game from Olivia is strong. Um, I wish. I, have we talked after a Kings victory yet? Like ever? Yes. Well, I don't know if you and I, were, Kenny, didn't they win last week? And you and I were. That's up? right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's what game right. was that? Was a that was a, you, you had Drake bars and everything. I missed Drake bars. I missed Olivia. I missed a lot. That was. Doesn't I matter. Totally, I know it's it's gone now. Feels like and it was an eternity ago here. <laughs> totally. At this point, well, they've I, actually I, lost a couple of times since then, Olivia. That's the that's the, the 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 frustrating part. I'm worried that I I'm either the jinx or the good luck charm. I, I don't know. You can only be a good luck charm because there this thing is already bad. So <laughs> it's, it's not like you're jinxing. Uh, you can only be a good luck charm. I'm constantly fishing for compliment. I'm just like throwing it out there. Kenny, give me a Do you miss me? Do you want me? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, and this team, let's be real. This team is beyond like jinxes and, uh, you know, lucky socks or lucky jerseys. Like We've this, tried this we, we have. We have literally tried everything and now we're just left here scratching our heads. Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like we need to. Is it the sage thing that you do at the beginning of the year? Some voodoo, some juju, all of the. Th I know that you all, as fans, Kings fans, have done all the things. I don't know if all of the the folks in management have done. Well, all the things. well hell, we even dedicated a, a Kwanzaa celebration to him. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it all. We laid out the the seven steps to a nice new year, and it went out the window yeah. <laughs> immediately. They Unity, didn't listen. purpose, all of that stuff. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. What's so wild about this team is like, they know, like they know everything. Like they know what went wrong. They, it, it appears by at least some of their post-game conversations, they know how it went wrong. <laughs> but in the moment, there's nothing they can do about it. Mm. It definitely feels that way. It feels like it's like you're teaching kids the sport of basketball, right? Like you want to scream at the run down faster, get into the offensive game sooner in, in the in the count. You know, like why are you waiting? Why is everyone running to the three point line and then looking at each other? Come on, guys! And it's, it, it's frustrating as a fan. I think even the guys on the court. I think it's frustrating for them, but it's as if they're they can't move. They're stuck. It's some kind of mental hiccup that they can't do the things they know they need to do and think that they've done prior to being a king, right? They, they had to do stuff before they became professional athletes. They had to play on teams. They had to step up that, you know, they had to have a particular type of basketball IQ to get to where they are, but somehow they become a king and it's deteriorating. It's just, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to play with these guys. I don't know how to move the ball. I don't know the basics really of how to get me started. An individual player has to know how to, to get themselves going, right? right. Shoot yourself into a streak, shoot yourself out of a streak, pass your way into to getting more assists. Um, all of those things people individually need to learn how to do, but they seem to be at a loss mm -hmm. when they join this team. And as clearly as a group, they're not able to get each other going in the way that we need them to. It's just, yeah, it's inconsistent and it's frustrating. Uh, I'll bring this to the table, though. maybe a little positivity when you talk about get themselves going, getting a, you know, a flow and everything. Do you feel like De'Aaron Fox 
is starting to get into that groove of, you know, playing good, consistent basketball. He had a, you know, three good games in a row or so, and he came back from COVID and was struggling. But before that, he was playing well. Do you think that he is kind of unlocking that, you know, find a way to, to to pick your game up a little bit? I think he is, but the, 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 the challenging thing really is getting too excited about three games. Right. Yeah, you no, should have really been out. And as you know, you want to protect your heart in a way as a fan. Like, I don't want to get too connected and start expecting him to show up night after night. But at the same time, that's what you should be expecting from mm. your, your number one guy on the team. I want you to show up every night. Yeah, you have maybe an off quarter, and, and I should say you should maybe every now and then have an off night. But I think I do think De'Aaron is showing up the way he did last year. It takes a while for him to get into the flow of the season, which to me means you need to start earlier in the off season. So we don't have to wait till we're halfway through before right. you really start stepping up in the way that we need you to. I feel like you're, you're such a perfect person to ask this question to, because you have, and probably still do work with like major companies, like massive companies like Google and all of these different things. And, and Kenny is Kenny has been of the mindset with particularly with with guys like Buddy and Marvin. Move them for Lou Aldang. Move them for a hamburger. Move them for anything. Just get them off of this roster because we know, you know, regardless of their, you know, they're they're not out there throwing the game or anything like that. We know that they don't want to be here. How damaging is it just in the form of a business to have guys like on your workforce who don't want to work here? It's huge. That's a big deal. Any company, nobody wants somebody or a gang of folks in a department who hate being there. It brings down the morale, productivity. It brings down, you know, all confidence and what you're doing, what are you showing up for every day? It's, it's lagging on the team. And I think it's a mental weight they're all carrying. It's an emotional weight they're all carrying. And that's why they keep falling into these, into these patterns. They don't see themselves collectively as winners and we just got to get you know they talk that common thing that we keep hearing is one bad apple but they don't finish the rest of the sentence it spoils the bunch mm. one bad apple we've got a couple of bad apples not bad players but just folks who clearly aren't part of the bigger picture that we have in mind for who these kings can be so it is about just you know cutting rope right. Bye guys. and hopefully they will be successful as humans we want them to be successful on other teams, but as Kings fans, it's like, let's, we got to do something. And I, Kenny got me here last week to, to just go ahead and do whatever you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. Got to do Stop something. Waiting. <laughs> Stop waiting for the perfect, you know, movement or the, you know, the most money you can get. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how much you can get for anybody anyway. So let's just make some moves to hopefully shift things. And that shift mostly is mentality. And when you have the correct mentality, then you've got people who want to work together to better show up um, for each game. And while they still may lose, again, at least them and their fans can feel like, yeah, they're invested in this team. And now I am, too. Right. That, the key word you say there is invested. Right. Like let's let's just be real. This isn't I'm not taking a shot saying they're bad people or anything like that. But if 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 the Kings, the Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Rashawn Holmes, are like oh, we're trying to build something here the hell is buddy healed and marvin bagley trying to they're not trying to build a damn thing here in sacramento like they they're waiting for the first opportunity to leave and when you have a group of guys they're like yo we need everybody together to build something and there's two guys that are like well you guys can build something <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm not i'm not gonna be here yet they're playing a bunch of minutes. They're being professionals. They're, I, I'm not saying they're going to be unprofessional, but it's just the whole, um, it's the vibe, it's the energy, right? This just isn't there. When you know, even on the court, you got three guys that are, you know, trying to go somewhere and, and the other other two, you know, you don't know. Maybe they're just trying to win the game. Maybe it's just about, you know, looking good individually for their numbers or showcasing all this other stuff. It's just bad vibes. And like I said, I, I feel like Marvin, aside from not trying to go in the game the one time and buddy, you know, all the time, they've been professional as professional as they can be, but we can't, we can't hide the elephant in the room. They, they not trying to be here. They're not trying to be a part of this. Yeah. But you can also tell when people don't want you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be a give and take here. If they don't mm -hmm. feel like they're mm -hmm. part of the future or that their skill sets are being um, tapped into enough. I mean, there's some give and take with this kind of relationship, but the, the, Bottom of the line here is not working. 
Right. So it's, uh, you, the you Kings to- and Marvin are like a relationship they can't get out of. Like they, <laughs> like they, 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 they want to break up. They elite. want to move out, but they don't want to split all the stuff. Like they haven't figured out how they're going to do it yet. So they're just stuck living with each other, not talking to each other, watching TV in different rooms and having no interaction. They can't figure out a way out of the relationship. Both of their names are on the lease. They don't remember who bought the couch. It's like, we're going to ruin my credit, so we're just going to have to ride this out. <laughs> That's definitely what it feels like. Yeah, you're, you're forced together. But eventually, you know, cut the couch in half or something. Cut the lease. <laughs> move in with your mama. Whatever it takes to just separate. And I again, Kenny got me there last week. I was like, well, maybe we can. I'm like, forget it. We're halfway there. Let's just cut ties. Get what we can if we can get anything. But and I do think changing mentality by changing personnel can do so much for an organization, any kind of organization. Mm. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Like, it feels like, you know, between you, you know, Deuce and Mo earlier, Casey, it feels like everyone's on board for, I don't even care at this point, just do anything, like get something done. And you mentioned we're halfway there. Like I it, I didn't realize this as many times as we've spatted out the number, but we're, tomorrow's game's in the books. We're halfway through the season. Mm. Yeah. We're 41 games into the season, and Monty McNair's term as a general manager has, has been a failure. It hasn't worked out. He fired Luke Walton, you know, 17 games into the season, I think, or maybe that's off. I can't remember how many exactly it was. I know it's 23 under uh, Alvin, so, you know, 30s uh i'm not doing math on the show but you get the idea <laughs> with luke walton i think 17 is actually somewhere around there um but it, it's just nothing nothing's happening it's just we're all just here and tomorrow we'll go on the floor and we'll play basketball against denver and we'll hope that we win and if we're down 13 to 2 to start the game we'll know why We'll know what happened. We'll mm-hmm. talk about it when it's over. But in the midst, when that uh, uh, 4-2 becomes 6-2, becomes 8-2, becomes 10-2, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to leave our fan base at home screaming at their television. I, I honestly feel like there's a lack of expectation that is affecting the team. Like They're not expected to do Within well. Within the team? Well, I think individual players want to do well. I think as a fan base, we expect them to put out a good product. We want to see them work hard and do things, but I think there's a level of expectation that is lacking because they understand and know how they're being thought about and talked about around the league. So if the league is other teams are talking about, yeah, I can go to Sacramento. We can get this win, put in our G league players, get a 10 Mm. 10 contract folks, get them on the court and still walk away with the win. Obviously all the players are hearing that the Kings players are hearing that. So there's a, a lack of expectation they are carrying with them. And then they show us that every night. Or every other night or every couple of nights. like We're not expected to win, therefore we don't. So we're living up to, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. Like We're not expected to win. People are frustrated by it, but we're also knowing like, well, this is who the Kings are. This is who they've been. Mm -hmm. So we're just part of that team, part of that legacy of losing. And I think that's a hard thing to get out of. I don't think they've done anything really this season to get out of it. And I don't know what the next steps are going to be to get out of it. But I, I do think like, if you don't have an expectation to win going into the game, then you're not surprised when you lose. Mm, and, and, and I think you can even see that in the way they carry themselves from quarter to quarter, where their shoulders are, where their heads are. They carry that. Well, we're not expect If we get the win, they are so excited. We are so excited for them. Oh my gosh, the buzzer, buzzer beater, but it's, it doesn't last. And, um, the winning is unexpected. The losing is expected. And I think that's the the drama, the the sad part of where we are right now in this season. It's it's a limited perspective. This is this is all we can do. This is all we have. And this is all we're gonna be able to produce. How do you break that? The Western Conference is terrible. So like yeah. yeah. How how do you break that, in your opinion? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Making a prayer. Let's go, Coach prayer. O. Let's go, Coach O. Let's motivate these guys. How do how, how, how do we break that? First of all, I need to get on the payroll to really. Thanks. <laughs> but I, I think it's what we were talking about earlier. It is about getting some folks out who aren't team oriented, who don't see themselves playing with the Kings, who don't want to be there, who are looking for out, you know, a way to get out of the organization. 
and because we do have some core guys who who really want to win. Nobody doesn't want to win, but who want to win and want to build something with the folks that are there. Um, and I, you know, with Alvin Gentry, he's had so many years in the league. It's depressing for me to see him depressed also. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he also needs to see upper management do stuff to make some moves for him to want to get out of bed in the morning and start all over again and not drink himself to sleep at night. I, I might be telling on myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it does take those like those literal steps. E again, even if they don't result in the immediate results that you want, it's as if you're telling the rest of your team and your fan base, yes, this is the truth. You guys aren't crazy. You're right. We see it. We're going to make moves and we owe that to you. Mm -hmm. And then it, it can change the mentality of the rest of the team. And then the pieces and parts could fall in place. You could find some players who then want to come to Sacramento mm -hmm. and want to play hard and want to build something. Right now, it feels like nobody cares. So why would I want to go to that team if nobody cares? Mm -hmm. I want to talk more uh, about what Olivia just uh, laid out, and uh, we will. Olivia is going to come back with us. We're going commercial free till the top of the four o'clock hour. Don't go anywhere. It's D'Lo and KC brought to you by McQueen and the Violet Fog, the smoothest gin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil. And we're back with more here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. I'm going to go grab some juice real quick, guys. I'll be right back. For show. I'm getting my water. I'm super close to the camera. <laughs> Maybach, Maybach. Oh, what did what did what did you do for New Year's Eve? Any any anything go down? Nothing super interesting. I did put on a party dress. I met some folks for a quick drink, but I'm still down in LA. And the Omicron, oh, shut down, down, shut down. No, LA yes. shut down. I mean, things are are technically open, but there's so many. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I, I can't stay out here for too long. Mm. Clink glasses. I made it to midnight. Peace. See, I made it. I made it to midnight. I was in the house. I, was, I really wasn't. I, I'm like, I think I talked to you. about. I don't know. Yeah, I think I did. I, I like going out. I don't have no problem going out. I have, have a drink, going to a little, you know, I don't need to be in like a club club, but, you know, um, a lounge or something like that. Like, I, I'm good. I like going out, but. I couldn't I couldn't swing it this year. This year was it's too much going on this year. So yeah. well even today, today's a pretty heavy day. Yeah. Like uh, this is us came back on NBC. It's the last season. It's emotional, blackish. It's the Ooh. last season. It's emotional. Oh, what's it, what what show what other shows are you watching right now? Um oh my gosh. Southside. HBO Max. I don't know if it was on like Comedy Central to begin with because it's clearly South like a, South Side is about Chicago. Mm. <laughs> it's hilarious, but it's got like a couple different groups of people that interact. So it's got these cops who are crazy cops mm. in South Side. Then the it's kind of based on these guys who work at RTO. It's a rent to own company. So they're always having to go to these houses and like you owe us the microwave and they don't <laughs> want to get the microwave. And is it a comedy? It's a comedy. It's so okay. good. Okay. It's so good. Did you it's watch The Shy? No. I like The Shy. The shy I like it better when um, Oh Boy was on there before he got kicked off, but I don't Ooh. think I've seen it since then. Um, what's the guy's name? Oh, I know you're thinking. Oh, you're talking about from it. from um, Straight Out of Compton, Easy E. Yeah, I, he was a wild boy right there. I encourage everyone to watch Southside, and if you hate it, there's something wrong with you. And <laughs> Southside. It's, it's so it's good. TV it's show. Streaming, it's streaming on HBO Max, but I think it was on like Comedy Central or something, because you can tell where like the commercial breaks were. Oh, know? okay, yeah. It's so funny. M I A. At uh, that's when he. That's when Marion got the Maybach O moniker when he went to MMG. You know what I watched recently. Menace to Society. I saw you live tweeting that. <laughs> I never watched Menace to Society. And like, there's oh, Odog. And I'm like, hey, I'm Odog. <laughs> oh, dog. I ain't seen That's that great. My, um, Clifton Powell, who is in that movie and in a bunch of other movies, probably best known as Pinky now. Um, he used to come into, he used to bring his son into the gym I used to work at in L.A. 
and he used to come in and he was like really he was cool like i i would just talk to him everybody would come in there they'd always talk about pinky i was like oh they do this all the time oh my gosh every time every <laughs> time but he he was a cool dude he was a real cool dude it's a weird thing watching a movie like that like 30 years or something 20 years whatever mm -hmm. after it came out i wasn't expecting murder like in the first three minutes i'm like oh my gosh they were just what you say about my mama <laughs> <laughs> And you so know like, what? I watched that. Um, what was it, Casey? Like a two, three months ago. Hmm. That's not a good movie. What? Menace? Oh, menace! Don't be a menace. No, menace to society. Oh, menace to society. Menace to society is not a good movie. Calm down. It's Wait, not a good movie. We talked about that. Like the I weird. Didn't agree like with you then I don't agree with you now. It's, <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's it's not a bad. No, it, okay. It's a weird, like it. There's no flow to so it. It's cinematically, just, you mean it's not good? Yeah, I mean, it's just like I, I a, can't understand it. They have a lot it's of just that. like scene fade to black. No, another say, scene. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you on that. I do get you on that. There's no like flow to it. It's like, yeah. what? How did we get to O Dog's house? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of thought. Why like, did we just? Why were we just in the drive-through? This was before he carjacked somebody. <laughs> hey, hang we on, guys. Hang on. We're coming back. That. ESPN 1320 and Odyssey, as well as twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320 and youtube.com slash ESPN 1320. We'll bring the uh, radio audience in here uh, to the conversation. Uh, Olivia just watched Menace to Society for the first time. Uh, you were live tweeting. Wait a minute. Wait a Hold on. Hold on. I didn't get that aspect of it. I thought you just watched it randomly. That's the first time you'd ever seen it? Yes, the first time. Well, what did you think now? I now, thought, wow, there's a lot of murder in this movie, a lot of really graphic fights, you know, where they're just like punching on the ground and like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, I can't believe people my age, you know, years ago watched this. Can you ask me about, you know, the 13th round? And I was like, I can't, cause I don't like boxing and beating on each other. And the whole movie was shooting up folks, punching them. And then the end, it just like, well, I should have left earlier. Yeah. Left Atlanta earlier. That was like the lesson is to move to Atlanta earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's society is they got a lot going on in that movie but then damien says it wasn't a good movie i ran up on him i was like what you mean it wasn't a good movie <laughs> and he explained cinematically you know the flow i do understand it's a collection of scenes yeah like the like understand. it's like a it's like it's it's like a if a someone put out a mixtape but the songs just faded and didn't actually mix together like the scenes just fade to black and then you're somewhere else. And then that scene fades. It's almost like a play. Like you, True. like you're supposed to applaud when the scene <laughs> ends and then it shifts and you're, you're, you're at Kane's grandparents' house. It's like, this is weird. Like, how did we get here? Was that the movie Tupac was supposed to be in and he beat up the Hughes brother? Yeah. 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 Right. Tupac. I think, I think Pac was supposed to be old dog. Old if dog. I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, I was like, he wasn't supposed to be Kane, but I think he was supposed to be old dog. Have you seen, you've seen Boys in the Hood? Yes, but I, I didn't see any of those movies that are classic black folks growing up movies because I mentioned this, I grew up in a very strict home. I was very afraid of going to hell. So when my parents were like, don't do this, I didn't do it. I can see Mr. Swilly. Yep, I see it. I see it perfectly. I, I, I see it perfectly. <laughs> And you're, then I, turned, I got a little older. I was like, "Oh, nothing's gonna happen." So now I'm like catching up on stuff. I I, I mentioned on Twitter, I'm like I'm gonna figure out how to play spades. I learned that. like he didn't say I wasn't allowed to play that. Like those I things. learned and forgot how to play spades. I'm gonna get, oh, take no. like a YouTube class or something. But I I learned dominoes a few years ago, and that's why I was like, oh, I gotta watch Boys in the Hood. Like I just want to have a <laughs> do it all together. <laughs> I'm gonna do all this black stuff I was supposed to do a long time ago. I'm gonna get all this. I'm gonna get all this in. Well, give me that Adina Howard CD so I can put that joint on and see what this is all about. You're that's so, that's so funny to hear you explain that because I met your dad. It had to have been twenty years ago, and I still refer to him as Mister Swilly. Like I still refer to it like. <laughs> he's never changed it either he said no call me no nope, it's hey mrs willie how are you my parents are southern there is no call me by my first name it is not a thing but i, I love 
I love that you just watched that. That just amuses the hell out of me. It's so funny. Well, I didn't see Coming to America until I was probably 30. Okay. So let's bring up the blackish question before we get back to the Kings. <laughs> Is Coming to America a black movie? Um, I think it's a it's movie. It's the toughest question I'm going to ask you all day. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I feel like a black because it's directed by John Landis. I know, but there are a lot, I know that a lot of folks, a lot of people who and who either um, fund black shows, black movies, are not black folks. Mm. Um, but I don't think the director has to be black in order. Like you, you probably grew up with some black folks, so like you know the color purple. <laughs> yeah, Steven Spielberg. Okay, there are a lot of, America, a black movie, and that you don't have to explain stuff. That's how you know it's a black movie. If you whoever don't whoever he was talking to or working with, they made sure everything was in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they made yeah. sure everything was covered. So I don't know if he had those experiences himself, but he teamed up with the right people. And yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's what constitutes a black movie is if you don't have to explain stuff to other black people, like they just kind of get it, then, you know, it, it's other people can enjoy it. Non-black people can enjoy it. But oftentimes they'll be like, well, what does that mean exactly? Um, and then you know that wasn't necessarily for them, for them, but they <laughs> had bought a ticket, so it works. Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society definitely don't leave people with the same feelings that Coming to America and The Color Purple do. <laughs> like, no, it's no, just, no, totally, no. just <laughs> very, very, very different feelings involved. I uh, still haven't right seen there. all of Color Purple, but I remember um, I grew up in a black church and like little black girls who are younger than I was used to come up to me and say, Olivia, Olivia, <laughs> your eyes. And I never knew what they were talking about. I'm with you on that one. I haven't seen it. I saw it when I was younger. I haven't re-watched it. So I don't remember much of it at all. There's an Olivia in The Color Purple. So that's the reason. And another thing with my name is older Black folks um, used to sing the OJ song to me. Olive and it's about Olivia being a hooker. Oh, oh my. Um, was, but they would sing it to me as a kid. Like They would hear like, oh, your name's Olivia. Oh, I like that song. And I'm like... I this is the hooker song you're about to sing to me as a 10 year old. So this know, is why I, I, uh, I know a, a, a young lady who was named Nikki after darling Nikki. Oh my, that's, <laughs> that's, I knew Ooh, you can't even <laughs> drop a bar from that song without getting in trouble. <laughs> my <laughs> goodness. Yeah. That's I a mean, banger though. That's yeah. a classic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Olivia. Yes. I got to ask before we move on. Have you seen purple rain? No, I know. Yes, see purple rain. Yes, see purple rain. As somebody David, who doesn't watch a lot of movies, I seen purple rain. So you gotta see purple rain. You might purple just rain have to. It comes on like VH1 a couple times a year. Send me a list. I'm down. Yeah, to watch, catch you might all. just have to come hang out, and we'll just yeah, pull up. We'll we'll knock all these out in like a a a, a cup of weekend or something. But, I mentioned Lean on Me last week, and with. What's his name from Shawshank Redemption? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. And yeah. Kenny, you didn't know what that was. He dropped Morgan a what's his Morgan name from Morgan Freeman. <laughs> 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 Olivia, you can't call Morgan Freeman. What's his name? You don't know what's in this cup right now. Um, McQueen in the Violet Fog Gin. Uh, yeah. Bring yeah. to Olivia Christian <laughs> today. That's, that's, like I, I, well, that's like the color purple. I saw it when I was like six or seven. And I don't remember it. Like I, I, they hear the the megaphone and and everybody coming, but I don't remember scenes from the movie. That's a very quotable black movie. Lean on. Here's my un oh, oh, that's oh. yeah, yeah, that's the one right there. Now but here's my unpopular take on Lean on Me. The Club Nouveau version of the record is better than the Bill Withers version of the record. Hmm. Hmm. Y'all can think about it if you want to. <laughs> But I ain't never played the Bill Withers version at a party and everybody starts singing along. I've dropped the Club Nouveau track before and everybody hits the we be jamming, we be jamming, hey now, doom, 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 doom. I know, again, those are things you're not supposed to admit out loud, but since we're bearing our souls here on D-Lo and KC. We never vibe. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a whole, we, we got to move on because that's a whole nother discussion about um, remakes when talking about songs samples or whatever being better than the original like i can't choose th this sounds crazy 
I can't choose between who did at your best better, the Isleys or Aaliyah. I can't choose. And to some people, that's that's sacrilegious. But I, Aaliyah. No, I think you can choose. You're just scared to say it's Aaliyah. No, don't 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 do that. Because Ron 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 bodied it. Come on now. He did. He bodied it. I I can't know. I I, no. I'm not. I'm not scared. Yes. I just can't tell. (laughs) They're just different vibes. And they come along in your life at different times, so you probably enjoy them for different reasons. I would never. Aaliyah's bodied it though. Bill Withers. I don't think I've ever played any of his catalog at a house party. That would make no sense. No, it would. It would not make any sense. Not my bag. If I'm taking the drive from SAC to SF, I might throw that on. Maybe. Yeah, Bill Withers is a chill dude. Like that's 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 a chill vibe. That's a. So it's not better or worse. It's just a different nice. vibe. It's just a different feeling you get from the. Brain. Will Smith said this in his book, and I have no idea if it's factually accurate, but it sounds really good. <laughs> like music, like music, like music is such like, and this is probably the case for movies. This is probably the case for basketball in sports. It generates like like we associate. Uh, he was using music as an example with like a certain time in our life. And he was making the argument. He was talking about hip hop when the Fresh Prince, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince started. Mm. He says, you can't find me a greater era of hip hop than when I was on tour with the likes of Run DMC and Eric Bean Rakim. And he starts to name all of these names. And for him, it triggers a certain point of his life that he remembers. And I think that's the way, like, that's why so many people dropped up back in my day. Mm. Like, that's why mm. so many Kings fans, we cling, older Kings fans cling to that 2002, to that eight-year stretch as the greatest stretch of basketball, because that's that's when we were our happiest. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only time we Kings fans were happy as basketball fans was during that stretch. And we just, we cling to those moments where like, oh, that that's 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 just the best era of music. That's the best era of wrestling or of television or of Kings basketball. Well, I might start some mess. That's Mike and LeBron in some cases. <laughs> that's facts. That's that's facts. That's right. Yeah. So I, I feel you on that one. Dr. David, he distracted me because he brought up another perfect one. Mm-hmm. And some respect needs to be shown to these men. Stevie's lately better than Jodeci's lately. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. I don't know. That's and JoJo, what they did with lately. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Unplugged too. Oh Unplugged. Yeah. Ooh, no that disrespect to the, to the God that is Stevie Wonder, but what they did with lately. Oh man. Mm, mm. That's, that's a really hard one because I'm like, well, what vibe? But those are equal vibes. Yeah. Like you get from those songs. But I just want to shout out Damien for that incredible transition um, from talking about music into basketball and the era. And, and how we associate ourselves or our, our feelings towards moments in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think that's true. And it, it, it definitely has to do with that conversation around who's the best basketball player ever. If you grew up with Jordan, mm-hmm. you love Jordan. If you were young and you were playing ball still in the backyard with your homies down the street, when LeBron came up, then you love LeBron. You love Kobe. Like all of those things are associated with what you were doing in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I think it's kind of, important to always have that um, perspective of what was going on in that era. So like Will Smith's era, that hip hop, yeah, that makes sense. And that's my era as well. Um, That seems like the best hip hop. And, you know, I like Jay-Z and some other folks who come. You can find gems in all of those generations, but where your heart lies is likely where you were at the particular time. And you're coming up and you're, you're, you know, adolescent or early 20s or something, college life, those kind of memories, those were the best of the years. And so that's what you're longing for. Uh, for the record, ninety three to two thousand is the best era in hip hop. <laughs> and I, I love that. I tried to get us back on track, and and, and Kenny derailed us, and then Olivia got us back on track, and then Kenny's attempting to derail it again. Like I, I appreciate that. Uh, I was trying. I'm glad you recognized that. I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Blame I got Dr. you, David. It's his fault, not mine. It's always somebody else's <laughs> fault, Kenny. You know what you are, Kenny. The last two, you've been the my bad guy. That's what, you, <laughs> that's what you've been. You've been the the, the my bad guy. Um, but in and, and, and it's also like as we look, you know, we're talking about that stretch of Kings basketball. It's the only good stretch to point to. 
Mm-hmm. And you're kind of like, we got to get something like that. We got to get, that's never going to live again. Like we're, we're never going to have that again. We've got to find something else that's good. And if it's the way that the Cleveland Cavaliers are playing right now, we'll take it. If it's the way the Utah Jazz play, we'll take it. We've just got to figure out exactly what it is and how the hell do we get there? Mm. And, you know, is it, you know, taking the playing out of the uh, equation and, and let's talk about like actually improving. Could one year, like we've talked about the dangers of being the Minnesota Timberwolves, like how the Minnesota Timberwolves missed the playoffs for, you know, 13 years or whatever it was, made the playoffs for one and then haven't made it since. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, it doesn't appear they're in any, uh, they, it doesn't appear that they're moving in any direction to turn things around. With the like one year, can that like be a reset for the franchise and be like, yo, we can grow, we could build off of this one year and now erase because this is what feels like it happened with Minnesota. It felt like Minnesota gets a pass for being terrible for the last decade and a half because they made the playoffs once. Mm -hmm. Can you hit the reset button on 16 years by improving? Like, and I'm talking about in the first year and look forward, like, okay. Now we've just erased that that mentality. I think you used that. Like you, you mentioned, oh, there's this. Uh, I think you said legacy of losing. Mm-hmm. Can you eliminate that legacy of losing with one successful year? Well, first of all, I think it's hard to judge what Minnesota is getting away with. Their fan base is likely talking the way the Kings fan base is. We feel they're you know desperate. They don't understand. We want to get back in the playoffs. They love KAT. Um, but it's not enough. They're looking for pieces and parts to put it together. Um, I think anything, but back to your initial question, I think anything, (laughs) anything is possible, Damien. (laughs) (laughs) I I do think it's, um, kind of managing your expectations. We went into the season hyped because of how last season ended and we thought, you know, we're going to make it to the playoffs. Now, I don't think we're wrong to think about that or to be shooting for that or having those goals. Cause you gotta, you have to have the long view. You got to stack days and day to day game to game, but also be like, this is why we're doing it. We're doing it with this in mind. Um, but moves can be made in the blink of an eye and just change the mindset, the mentality of the flow very quickly. There are lots of teams who go through decades of drought. They have one good season, they fall off, but then they come back because they, they learn from their mistakes and they build their team back. It's like the Cubs or the Red Sox. You mm-hmm. had it out forever. It, it's hard to get there. It takes a lot. You've got you know, a couple dynasties in every league. It takes a lot to get there. For those guys who've gone, who've had that taste, they're like, oh, the struggle to get back there is real. Um, but it's possible. And again, that's that may not be the best thing to do. Everything is possible. But I don't, I don't <laughs> think it even matters the 14, 15 years the Kings – haven't made it to the playoffs. Yes, emotionally it does. But every day, every player, every every game is an opportunity to change. Mm-hmm. And I think the Kings have to want to change top down. Everybody has to want that change to make it a reality. But as Kenny said, there's some folks who don't eat, don't really feel like they want to be part of the change. They're not involved in the change. I'm not wanted. They don't want me. I don't want them. So you just got to cut that loose and then start building, putting those blocks together. And it, it can be a couple of things. That make a difference or you know sometimes it's gonna be big giant things that have to happen to change it but regardless it can't get better if you don't do something to make it better yeah and I, i've said uh, monty uh, i'm sorry i was <laughs> monty did you hear that it can't get better if you don't do anything what is that the definition of insanity doing the same thing over again expecting a different result that's Fact. that's that's like no that's not the definition of that's insanity. not it I believe that's Einstein's definition of insanity. Well, it's somebody's, it's somebody's definition. It's of somebody. Insanity. It's not actually the definition, and that's oh. one of the worst lines ever. But go ahead, Casey. Okay, Google. What is the definition? <laughs> um, you got to ask Siri, not Google. I'm not an Apple person. You know this. Oh, that's right. You got the green text messages. Yeah. Gross. Wow. Gross. Like, Apple people are the worst. I hope for so much better for you, Maybeko. <laughs> than have green text messages. Thanks. Um, I said a couple of weeks ago that to, to what you were talking about, Olivia, there needs to be for, for what's going on here in Sacramento, there needs to be somebody unbelievably irrational 
and they cannot get, quote unquote, beat down by the losing. There needs to be somebody who looks at 15, 16 years and says, it doesn't matter because you guys didn't have me 15, 16 years ago. I'm here now and this is all going to change. And I don't know if they have a guy in that organization right now who says that. But didn't that feel like it was De'Aaron? Remember how hyped everyone was when De'Aaron said he wanted to come to Sacramento? Yeah, but he got beat down. Well, I shouldn't say that. People believe he's getting worn down by the losing. I need somebody that three, four years in, no, well, this is your. You know what was kind of like that was DeMarcus. You couldn't, I felt like you could not deter DeMarcus from believing that that was the year they were going to break the, the drought. Whether he was right or not, obviously he was wrong, but he and he was and he didn't run from it. Some of it had to do with the 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 money, but he's like, Yeah, I'm I'm here. Guess what? I'm staying. <laughs> Aileen, guess what? I'm here. I'm gonna be here. What you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like part of it had to do with he's getting 200 million dollars, but he he never looked at Sacramento as I can't do it here. I just can't do it here. He said, I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna figure it out. And I think that's the type of mentality you need from your best guy or best two guys to turn this thing around. Because it is, it is rough around here. You can get, you know, kind of lost in the woods by all the losing and some of the stuff that seems to go on behind the scenes. But I think in, in addition to that, I agree with you, Kenny, but I also think you need somebody and and management that has that mentality as well. Hmm. But the irrational hope. They're moving things around. They're trying to find the pieces and knowing that it may not work right away, but you've, you've got a long game here. And, and even having a conversation with fans and, and, and folks in the media about talking about the process. I think when people feel like they're in on it, they, will, they are with you. When they know things are being done with a, for a particular reason, like where I'm moving these parts and pieces around, we're getting these players in, we're bringing them up within the system. It's going to take time. You know, I think a couple of weeks ago, Damian, and you asked me who my favorite athlete was. And I said, Derek Jeter. And I like Derek Jeter because I think he's a great, he was a great baseball player, but also a great man. And now he's in Miami as the GM. Mm, they can move. Right. And it's like, he's used to winning, right? He's got a number of rings, MVPs, AL, gold gloves, all those. And he's going to an organization that has a history of losing. Mm -hmm. And so he's doing the work and the magic and the background and the shadows trying to build up a new generation of players in that team. And I don't know if that's happening with the <laughs> Kings, <laughs> but I mean, I think we have a sense, but I, I think that's what the organization needs is somebody on the court who's doing that, as Kenny said, but also within the system that right. can communicate that effectively. So you're not losing your fan base. You're not losing a generation of potential Kings fans because they don't feel like the team cares as much as mm -hmm. they do. I, I just, man, I hate the thought that De'Aaron, I mean, I, I get it. And I think we had this conversation with James where he talks about how this organization can wear on you and covering you know, Kings fans, just fans who watch the game and don't have to write about it and don't have to talk about it. And more specifically, don't have to play in it. Mm -hmm. They're worn down. They're tired. We've discussed, uh, you know, there, uh, I, I think there are some people who think apathy is setting in for Kings fans. And I don't think that's the case. Shoot. I, I, I mean, we, we see that in the way people still passionately talk about losing just as passionately as they talk about winning. And it's all because we want the team to do better. And sometimes I look at Kings fans and think, damn. If we had one or two players that felt like some Kings fans felt, maybe we'd be able to turn this things around. Mm. But I think so many of them think, oh, let's just do it somewhere else. Mm. But it's fine. Like, I'm not going to be here very long. Like, that was the thing with, like, Tristan. And and even to a certain degree, Mo Harkless. Like, well, I have no investment in this. Right. Like, and obviously every player on a roster isn't going to have like a long-term investment. Like there are guys who are journeymen. There are guys who are going to have a one-year investment or a two-year investment, but it feels like all of the guys that the Kings get are one or year, two year, or one year investment or two year investments to go along with De'Aaron and, and now Tyrese. But unfortunately in the past, it was De'Aaron, Buddy, Harrison, who were the little one-year investments we're going to put in there. And some guys do, a tremendous job. Vince Carter invested in Sacramento. He knew he wasn't going to be here more than a year. Garrett Temple invested in Sacramento. Knew he wasn't going to be here 
more than a year. But there are some guys who get in here and they're just about playing ball. And you look around and yeah, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I might even be out of here by the deadline. And so we're left here like, all right, who's really bought in on this team? We still here. And if, <laughs> we still here. <laughs> we that's still it. Here. Yeah, that's it. Well, sometimes yes. there's, there's no way to know. Sometimes I'd say there's no way to know um, whether or not a guy's going to be able to be emotionally invested in the team on the court night after night, like a Vince Carter, some other folks who came in and out until they're there. Mm -hmm. But it, the point is when you identify who those people are, then make the move faster. They're not in for the long run, even or even for a year to do the thing, the things that we need them to do to put in the kind of work we need them to put in to come hard, whatever that is. So let's make a move again, sooner rather than later. Why prolong it? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where we are right now. Like, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Right. It's, it's only going to make it worse, <laughs> one, for the season, but also just for the mentality and the longevity of the organization to go by a whole another year and to waste the opportunity to build on something. You've got a great group of guys right now. You've got three mm -hmm. or four guys that you want to keep. If you want them to to want to show up every night and stay invested and want to really build with you, you have to show them that you're willing to make some moves mm -hmm. and that you have a GM IQ that we need you to have or man or coaching, whatever those things are. It, it says something to the guys who are, do, who are doing really well, Tyrese, De'Aaron, um, Davion, those folks, it says something to them for them to see you trying to make moves to put them in a position to be successful. If they don't right. see it, right. why, do, why would they want to show up? Right. Yeah. And they are showing up, but like they're going to, again, kind of get pulled down into the legacy of losing and eventually be like, I got to get out of here too. So it's a, it's a whole organizational it's issue. It's it's imperative uh, right now that they, to your point, Olivia, they can't let that happen to Fox and Halliburton. Like that's mm -hmm. another reason why Monty McNair has to do something like what you just talked about as far as, you know, you're not even trying to surround them with better people or, 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 you know, change things up and then looking at it like they, they don't care. You know what I mean? Like they're just here to collect a check or, you know, whatever the case may be. Maybe that's the approach I should have. They can't, Monty McNair, Vivek Ranadive, they can't let those things happen to these two guys. I think so if you're, that's if why these moves need to be made as well. If you're at a point where you're professional at anything, you want to be surrounded by other people who are in on it, who want to do well. You spent too many hours shooting in your backyard and going to the gym or whatever, working out and watching what you eat and getting ready, getting ready. There's no way you get to a certain level where you're like, I'm good now. Mm, All of these right. guys are trying to make the all-star team. They want to be thought of as generational players. They're not all going to get there, but I believe they're all hungry and they mm. want to get, and they need their organization to see that in them. And then again, put them in a place where that hunger doesn't die off. Mm. Where they're now like, I got to go find somebody else, some other team, some other energy source to keep me in the gym, to keep me thirsty, to keep me hungry for a win. Because it is it is easy. They're always going to be the next generation of, of players coming up who can take your spot. So, I, again, I think they want it. They're hungry for it. But it does take management, does take leadership to put them in a position to be successful on the court and to make moves Again, to bring in other members of the team that are going to inspire them, encourage them, know their role, and inspire the fan base to want to be emotionally invested in the team's success. And be okay with losing if it takes a while to do that because we see the moves that are being made. All right. Yeah. I think the frustration comes in, and this, you know, I will we'll go back to that that clip of De'Aaron Fox several weeks ago when James Ham asked him about winning, and and you know, De'Aaron talked about I've I've won everywhere I've been like i've won everywhere until i got here i won in you know high school hey you like I, I, i'm like that's that's what i do of course i i care about winning and then you, you know <laughs> you you wonder like you don't want to get like that was a question that you know because we talked about it with james that was a question that james had to he felt like he had to ask mm -hmm. a professional basketball player mm -hmm. losing bothers you right like the, or does losing bother you and that's a that's a it's a weird question to have to ask a professional athlete. And I think part of it boils down to what you were just talking about and getting one beat down by the losing, but also feeling like if there's no progress, if there's no changes, how are we gonna stop losing? Like, am I settling in 
you know, he settled, he had to settle in. I think it was his rookie year, Casey. Correct me if I'm wrong when Vince and, and, and Garrett Temple and those guys mm-hmm. were he had to settle in 38 games into the season. Okay, we're not trying to win anymore. I'm gonna get more playing time. Uh the, all of these other guys are gonna get more playing time. You know, and then you okay, the next year, what happens? Oh, next year. Okay, we're fired up. Here we go. 39 wins. Oh, well, we got to get Luke out of here, though. So he's he or we got to get Dave out of here. Let's let's bring in Luke. And now it's like, okay, we're wait a minute. We're still losing. Hmm. We're still losing just like we were when you stopped playing guys like Garrett Temple and Zach Randolph and, and Vince Carter and all of those guys because we were trying to lose. Right. Now we're allegedly not trying to lose, but we still are. That's got to be the maddening part, especially for someone like De'Aaron Fox. You don't want this to get to the point with Tyrese Halliburton or Davion Mitchell where it's like it, we were tanking and we were playing the same exact way as when we're trying. Right. Wow. That's, that's a problem. It's a big problem. <laughs> big bro and that and, and Olivia you, you you hit the nail on the head that's another reason why moves have to be made Monty has to has to show these guys like look we're really trying to change things here we're really dedicated to changing the the culture here changing um just winning and losing you know what I mean? we're not okay with this and we're gonna get guys in here to support you if we're asking you to be the face of the franchise. We're asking you to be somebody that stands up in front of the media every time and, and, and takes all the, you know, the darts and things of that nature when it's going bad. We're going to get guys in here to help you so you don't have to have those type of experiences night after night after night. Yeah, that's, I mean, you're spot on. They, that's another great reason why he's got to make a move. Yeah, you know, it's interesting thinking about, I, I think I was listening when you were talking to James and he talked about having to ask that question. You know, sometimes people aren't demonstrative in their disappointment. Mm-hmm. You know, when Darren gets excited or he's like, hey, you found it. When he shows that emotion, it's kind of surprising to me too. Like, oh, he's got feelings. He's, you know, <laughs> it doesn't mean he doesn't. <laughs> to me, it's like, of course he cares. I don't fault James for asking that question because I think it's a great opportunity for us to hear him talk about how passionate he is about winning and how, you know, he's used to it. And mm-hmm. he's not giving up on winning now. But I, I I spoke about this, I think, with you, Kenny, last week about, you know, the coaches and management also being cognizant of the type of people these players are, Mm. not just what their skills are, but how they show up on the court. As much as we want Tyrese to shoot more and God, I want him to shoot more. He's not looking for the shot right away. He's looking for an opportunity to get other people involved. So now it's about positioning again, positioning people in a way where they're most effective but when their number is called, we need you to take that shot. And we need you to know that. We don't want to have to tell you to take the shot. We need you to know that from the feel, your, your basketball IQ, the feel of the game, the flow of the game. Um, I think it's all about recognizing those things. Um, and But also as a fan base, not expecting people to, to show up like DeMarcus and be mm-hmm. growling and fighting and getting teased. And that mean passion. It could mean passion and showing up in a different way. And I think De'Aaron is showing us that passion in a different way. Um, but he also needs other people on the team, as you said, Kenny, to to and management to show him that same level of passion um, through the moves that they make. If he's passionately showing up and putting up 25 and doing the things that we want him to do that we know he's capable of, the only way he's not sapped of that energy and fire is if he's also seeing that type of dedication to the team investment in the team from the other players and from management. Mm. And that's how you break the cycle. Mm-hmm. Don't this call me is, that 10 years from now and nothing has worked. But we'll see. This is another question that I think you're uniquely qualified to answer because you brought up Tyrese and shooting more and how we all want him to shoot more. And Tyrese said, uh, you know, I think someone, you know, probably James asked him something about shooting more. And he was like, I, the, the people have been people have been telling me that my whole life. I need to shoot more. Like, how difficult is it to break someone's habit of like he, he literally said they've been telling me this my whole life. Y'all are still telling me this almost as if y'all can keep saying it. It's not necessarily going to change, but we have evidence in front of us. Like Tyrese is like a 40 some odd percent shooter right now, a three point shooter. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't shoot a ton of them. And it's like, yo, Ty, shoot. Kenny talked about the reaction from the bench last night when he passed up a, a, a wide open three, like they're screaming at him to shoot. How difficult is it to break someone even, you know, I, I, at a, at a young age, I guess of, you know, 20 years old of, of habits that they've done of habits they've had their entire life. They have to want it. 
if he doesn't want it, you can't want it enough for him. Right. Mm. Right. Like if he doesn't see it as a problem, like, oh, they've been telling me. I don't me that know that Tyrese is going to be shooting the ball more than. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, for any habit to change, like I like Doritos after a workout, but I'm not going to get skinny if I work out in any Doritos. But I have to want that. As much as you want me to eat healthy, it's not going to work. If I'm like, you know what? People have been telling me to stop eating Doritos forever. Isn't that funny? Crunch. No, I have to put the bag down, especially the jumbo bags. There's Doritos like within my reach. That's what I'm thinking about. I believe uh, I'm when you, any, any dream you want, anything that you want to contribute, any, anywhere you see yourself, it's not enough for everybody else to see that for you. You have to want to change. Mm -hmm. You have to want to add that to your game. You want to spend some time in the off season talking to other shooters or however they, how do I add five more or let's look at some footage. How can I get five more shots up? How do I get 10 more shots up? But it, it doesn't matter as a fan base or as a coaching staff, unless they bench him for not doing it. It doesn't matter if we want it. He has to want it. And he's had success not doing it. But if he wants to get to the next level, again, something that he has to want, then he's going to need to do that. Well, I mean, can you convince someone like, no, you, you're, you're, you're really good. You could be even better if you just do this. It's weird. I don't know. Cause the people who are telling them that are people in a position to be able to say that effectively, right? It, it's not Olivia passing him on the street saying, yo, you should shoot more. Yeah. It's a legitimate <laughs> NBA guy saying, yes, you should shoot more. And that hasn't worked. The, so it, the, it has to be a dream that he dreams for himself. My bad about that. But the interesting thing about that is in Tyrese's case, Tyrese is a high IQ player mm -hmm. who is team first. He's all about winning and doing what the team needs to win. And with him being a high IQ player and dedicated to doing whatever the team needs, the team needs you to shoot. <laughs> so I, I, you need, you should know that you should know, like I, I'm going to morph into um, whatever the team needs to be successful. If we had, you know, two other 20 point per game uh, scores, I don't have to shoot. I'm going to distribute to them, but no, we need you to be, a guy that's close to 20 points per game do it but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't connect for whatever reason i don't i don't know why you, and it, I'm, i don't mean to say that i have a solution to get him to to do it i just understand that you can't make a grown person do something that they don't want to do mm -hmm. now if, if it meant that i was better and making my team better i would try to figure out a way to do it if i were mm -hmm. tyrese um but at this point clearly it's not something that he's taken on um and that's disappointing. Yeah. There, that one, I don't know if it was the three that he didn't take. Was it the three that he didn't take? And then he passed it to De'Aaron. And then he and it ended up being a turnover. And they I, I don't tried know to pass that. it back to Buddy and turned it over on that on that it play. Was, yeah. It was, yeah. It was rough. And in my mind, I'm like, is he trying to be too nice? Did he want an assist? Did he did he doubt himself in that moment? Maybe I won't make it. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for missing that shot. Hmm. Who knows what's going on in his mind? But um I agree with you. I think he needs to shoot more, but I just don't know if there's anything that can be said to him outside of him wanting it to can to make him change his ways. We're trying to fix all the world's problems here with uh, 1320 host and contributor Olivia Christian. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us.